So the Canon autofocus area menu. There's a lot of confusion here. I've dug deep so that you don't have to. And really what this all breaks down to is sampling different parts of the sensor to get focus. You can find this menu in a couple different places on a couple different cameras with a couple different options, but we're gonna try and make this information apply across the board. For a majority, we're gonna be looking at the R10 menu, but we'll bring in some factors of some others. So the first thing we're looking at here is the spot autofocus area, and it is going to be your smallest sampling area. Think about getting the pollen in focus on the stymen of a flower. You got a real open aperture. You need to be real precise with a shallow depth of field. That's when you would use the spot autofocus area. Next is your one point autofocus area, a much larger sampling area. Use this to you know, get the eyeball of an animal or your main subject in focus. And then to right of that, we have expanded autofocus areas. And what these are, if your main focus area doesn't have enough contrast or detail, that one spot, then it's gonna jump to these other four sections, either the one above, below, left, or right, and it's gonna try and grab detail or focus from there to get the shot. And that can be a problem, let's say you're focused on an eye and it can't grab the eye, maybe they have sunglasses or something on, not enough detail, not enough contrast, but the ear is well lit and it grabs the ear and focuses on that. If you have a shallow depth of field, it could cause some issues. And the one to the right of that is the same, but now you've included the corners as backup focus points. That's basically what those are. Backup points for when that center point can't get in focus. And if the center point doesn't lock and one of those others do, it'll highlight when you take the shot so you know where you got your focus from. After that, we have different zones on the R10. We got one, two, three. They look like this, this, and this. And those are basically, you're telling it to focus on that area of the frame, that area of the sensor. If something comes into that area that has contrast and detail, as soon as it comes in, that's what focus is gonna lock onto. That's where it's gonna put the focusing points and try and grab your contrast in detail from. Consider using this maybe if you're, you know, watching the elk rut or something, you know the elk's gonna be coming in from the left, but you wanna have some headway on the right of the frame for him to walk into. So you choose that left zone, the elk comes walking in and it's gonna grab focus. And one thing about these zone areas is face detect works, tracking works, but the eye detection will not work. So it's gonna go for the critter's body and then the critter's face, but it will not get as precise as eye detection in these zone focusing areas. Something to think about. Then you got the whole focus area. Use this a lot in video. So anytime a critter or a subject comes in the frame, you're looking at the whole subject area. It's gonna grab on and follow that critter around. Then we have subjects to detect with Canon's new auto focusing system. It will detect animals, people, and vehicles, all the way down to an eyeball of people, eyeball of animals, and in vehicle tracking, it can even track the helmet of a rider in a race car. Now that's pretty cool and pretty precise, and you're just going to select subject detect, turn on eye detection, or in the case of a vehicle, info, further options, and turn on the point detection. If you guys wanna see how I set up the Canon R10, for my wildlife settings, I do a complete walkthrough in this video here. All right, thanks for watching, enjoy, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.